this is where I see myself in 10 years time. What would I need to do in order to achieve that? And do you think this organization and this company can offer me that? But constantly moving careers and constantly moving jobs can have a, a negative impact on your career and not necessarily a positive impact on your career. There is nothing worse for a, a recruiter or a business to have someone accept an offer and then get a counter offer and decide to stay with their current employer. That can be avoided if you just sit down and have a conversation with your manager, your superior, your supervisor to say, If you are considering a job move, but you're not quite sure if it's the right move for you right now, this is the episode for you. My name is Georgie Hubbard and I'm the co-founder of Sisterhood Club. And I want to give you all of the tips, strategies, and tools that you need to empower you to make the right career moves and really succeed in your life and your career. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing five things that I want you to think about before you move jobs. Now, I have worked in recruitment for almost a decade now, and the amount of times that I have seen people move jobs, move careers, and then six months down the track, they're in exactly the same position, they're not happy, they're questioning if they've made the right move, and they're just constantly getting themselves in this spiral of changing jobs, but basically not being any happier, not being any more fulfilled, and realizing that maybe they've actually made a big mistake. And unfortunately, their position has been backfilled in their old, old organizations. It happens a lot. Now, the, the first thing that I would say to be really aware of from a recruitment lens is when we look at resumes, we do look at how long somebody has been in a job for. If that person has been in a job for less than a couple of years, there is gonna be a few question marks around, okay, why did this person leave that organization within a two year period? If there is a pattern that occurs that people can't seem to last past a couple of years, yeah, we're gonna be thinking, okay, what's going on with this person? Why have they, why have they constantly kept on moving, moving and swapping jobs? Now, of course, if you're a contractor, different story. But again, most contractors that we have placed typically last in organization for at least 12 months, usually over two years. So before you are moving jobs, be really self-aware enough to go, right, is it the job or is it me? Your career is such an important part of your life, but it's not your whole life. Your career should not be your everything. It should not be where you get all of your joy, fulfillment and happiness from. And if that is what you're expecting it to do, you are really setting yourself up for failure. So maybe just start there. Do you need to get some hobbies and some interests outside of work? Because if, if you're putting all that pressure on your job and your career to be your absolute everything, as soon as something doesn't go to plan or you don't feel like you're progressing enough, you're gonna get bored and you're gonna move on. So look, take a deeper look at yourself. Ask yourself some big questions of, am I expecting too much of my career? Do I need to look within and make sure that I'm making myself happy first? And then when I'm a whole happy person, my career is a part of me, not all of me. I think that's a really important self-reflective question to ask of, am I expecting too much of my career? Is, is it me or, or is it actually the job? So once you've done that sort of like self-analysis and if you've come to the conclusion that, no, do you know what? It's not me. I've been at this job now for quite a long time. I do feel ready to move on. Here's some questions to ask yourself to make sure that you are making the right move. So the first thing, that I want you to think about is, why do I want to leave this job? I believe it's really important to have a good understanding of what, why, why do I wanna leave this job? Because if you don't know why, you're not gonna then be able to identify, 
a company culture or a job that is going to suit your skills, your needs and your desires moving forward. So really thinking about, you know, what have I loved about this job? What have been the things that I've really enjoyed? What are my strengths? What do I get a lot of fulfillment from week to week? But what are the things that I don't enjoy about the job? And really write those things down as well, because moving forward, when you go and interview and get hopefully multiple job offers, you will be in a position to really decide, okay, this is the job for me because of this reason. Too many people in my personal experience don't have a clue about why they wanna move on from an organization. They don't know what they want. They don't know where they wanna go. Clarity is so important when applying for other jobs. It's really important to think about what do I want in my next posi- in my next position and why do I want to move on from the current position I'm in now? If you have that clarity, you're going to be in a far more empowered position to be making those decisions and to go, yes, that's the job for me. So when the offer comes in, you accept it without hesitation. So number one, ask yourself the question, why do I want to leave this job? Seek clarity. And once you've got that clarity, you can move on to question number two. What are my career goals? Where do I see myself in five years time? Does the current company I work in have that career timeline? If I stay where I am now, am I going to be able to climb up the ladder and get to where I want to be? Or am I working for a really small business? And I think actually, do you know what? There's probably not the opportunities that I really want in this organization? Or am I working for a massive Fortune 500 company and actually I wanna have more say in the strategic decisions moving forward? I wanna have more say in the build phase. Like, what do you want to do with your career? What do you want to achieve? Once you understand this, you can then decide whether to stay or whether to go. Because if you realize that you're in a role where there is not much career progression, then it's an easy decision to move on. Whereas if you're in a role and you can see other people moving up the ladder and you go, okay, that's where I want to head, put your hand up, make yourself visible and state that that's where I wanna be in the next two years. What do I need to do to get to get myself there? That's a really, really important question to ask because if you don't have a career goal, if you don't know where you're heading, It would literally be like jumping in the car tomorrow and just driving and just driving aimlessly and not getting to any particular destination. So really sitting down and thinking about where do I see myself in the next 10 years? Does the current organization provide me with the ability to achieve those goals? If not, it could be time to move on. But make sure you're moving on with with a set of skills that you can then apply to your next position. The third piece that I would say to really consider and to really make sure that you have done before you make your career transition is speaking to your manager, speaking to your superior, speaking to your supervisor and saying, this is where I see myself in 10 years time. What would I need to do in order to achieve that? And do you think this organization and this company can offer me that? Have these conversations Don't be afraid to put yourself out there, ask these questions. It's really, really important. And it gives the employer an opportunity to go, okay, well, I'm really glad that you've told me that, Susan. Now I can go away and make sure that, you know, when we're thinking about the next project or the future, we take that into consideration. The amount of times that people just hand their notice in and the employer, the manager had no idea that that person wasn't happy. And then it turns out that there is an opportunity coming up and then they end up then burning the, the, the other employer, say, actually, I'm really sorry, I decided to stay because they didn't know the opportunities, they didn't know the forecast, they didn't know that there could be a position for them at that current company that would really interest them. Please don't do that. There is nothing worse for a a recruiter or a business to have someone accept an offer 
and then get a counter offer and decide to stay with their current employer. That can be avoided if you just sit down and have a conversation with your manager, your superior, your supervisor to say, this is what I want to achieve in my career. Do these, do these opportunities exist in this organization? Yes or no? Once you know the answer to that, it becomes really nice and easy to make a decision whether to move on or not. But if you do not know that information, do not even consider looking for another opportunity. Of course, if you're not happy where you are, you're working in a toxic environment, please get out. But if you are just sitting on the fence, should I stay, should I go? Having these internal conversations first can really just make you feel clarity and a sense of calm that you are making the right decision for you and your career. Not having these conversations can really be really detrimental down the track and actually can make you burn bridges. So make sure that you're having these conversations if you are not sure whether to stay or whether to go. The fourth piece that I would say is really important is always thinking about a plan. So when you're moving on from your current position into another role, of course, there's always going to be a risk with everything in life. And sometimes we just need the courage to take that first step. So let's just say you have decided it's time to move on from my organization. Do you have a plan in place? And make sure you have a clear idea of what you want to do next. So you can then enable yourself and tool yourself up with the right skills necessary to really succeed in your next job. So if you decided to make a career pivot, for example, and to go into a completely different industry, take the time to upskill yourself. Don't just jump ship and expect to be absolutely excelling in that job. Make sure that you're going, okay, if I really want to transition career in, in a, and, and make it successful, where are my gaps? What do I need to work on? Where do I need to upskill? Make sure you have a plan. And if you decide to leave your current job and then go in uh, while you're sort of working on building up the skills, make sure that you're not putting any, to, any, any pressure on yourself. For example, if you just quit your job tomorrow and then in three months time, you are panicking about money, then you're just gonna be jumping into a job that you don't particularly want and then that's how people fall into a trap. So if you have decided to leave your organization or to have a career pivot or to get into a different industry, have a plan in place. Ideally, the best time to look for a job is when you have a job. That's the ideal scenario, right? But if you are so unhappy that you just have to leave, make sure that you're leaving with a bit of a plan in place. Make sure you're leaving with a bit of cash in the bank to support yourself because there is nothing worse than looking for a job or learning a new skill set with that financial pressure on your shoulders. So having a plan of, okay, if I'm gonna leave this job tomorrow, how am I gonna support myself? How am I gonna pay my bills? You know, what am I gonna have to sacrifice? Roughly how long do I think it's going to be before I'm in a next, an, an, another job? Will I have to take a little bit of a pay cut because I'll be starting uh, you know, a whole new career and a, in a whole another industry. Make sure you factor all of these things in. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is transitioning careers and then expecting it to, to them them to be out of work for two months, three months. When sometimes it can take up to six months to get a job and to be on you know a decent salary again. So make sure you have that plan in place. Have have a bit of a plan for for the worst, but also. Think about, okay, best case scenario, likely case scenario, worst case scenario, because if you've planned for that, you're gonna be far more empowered to make the decision to, to, to transition as opposed just to jumping ships and then panicking that all of a sudden in a few months time, you've got no money to pay your bills. So have a plan in place, that's absolutely key. The final question to ask yourself before transitioning any job is, what impact is it going to have on your career? As I said at the start, if, if you have been in roles for less than two years, that is going to raise some question marks. So be really, really thoughtful of, okay, is transitioning careers right now the right thing for me to do? Or 
Do I need to reach out to people in the business and say, look, this is my, this is what I want to achieve in my career. Do these positions exist in this organization? If they do, amazing. I love to put myself forward. Where are my gaps? Where could I upskill? But constantly moving careers and constantly moving jobs can have a, a negative impact on your career and not necessarily a positive impact on your career. So really sitting down before you make these career moves and asking yourself these key questions is so important because once you know that you're making the right decision, everything else becomes easy. Once you know what you want, you are going to be far more excited and empowered and enthusiastic to be approaching the job market, to be going to recruiters and saying, this is what I want in my next position. I want to be on this much salary. I want flexible working conditions. I want a position where I am in leadership and I've got a team underneath me. Giving people those types of directions is really, really helpful and also will benefit you as the job seeker as well. So I really hope that this episode today has given you food for thought and really made you think, okay, before I transition careers, move on to a new job, these are the things that I need to be thinking about. And hopefully you're now feeling empowered to make the right decision. And if you do decide that you want to move careers and you are somebody that is currently living in Australia and you have a technology background, please reach out to some of my team at CH Talent Solutions. We would love to help you. And uh, on that note, I will speak to you in the next one. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you enjoy these episodes, the number one thing you can do to help us grow and keep spreading our mission and message is to hit the subscribe button. And if you have time, give us a quick rating. Appreciate each and every one of you who tune in every week. And we look forward to bringing you many more episodes this year. Take care.